if you're looking for something a little bit stronger welcome to my bar here uh, let's take a look at this same io configuration i'm going to bring you into the top down so usb usb3 you've got a usb4 label so let's hope that that's usb4 type c port oculink here must power off pc then plug unplug oculink cable so don't hot swap this bad boy is what they're telling you similar layout and design as the other one but actually i will show you one thing it is a little bit thicker so this one has a grill on the side this one probably more airflow in that style to be honest um, so pretty close this one just sits a little bit taller so got a little bit more horsepower let's see about width exactly almost exactly the same this one's a little narrower but a little bit taller so a couple little differences on this one this is the k8 you're going to see that here on the Knuckbox K8 Plus designation that we have here. Same design that you can take that adapter that we had and I covered up and you can mount this on the back of a monitor on the Visa posts. So very cool. Let's take a look at the back. Dual, a 2.5 gig, two more USB, it looks like twos and an additional USB 4. So this is going to lean more towards the USB. So you got one additional USB port on this one but they're both USB 4 type C. So you've got a lot more capability there. You've got your HDMI, you've got your DP. I believe you can run four monitors on this, but we're gonna check it out uh, and verify on the online stats. And then you've got your plugin. Now this one, I have not taken the cover off. You can see here, rotate the cover lid and this pops off completely. Take a look at that, how easy that is. Now look at the fan on this bad boy. So the other one, you saw the fan size, like a quarter of the size of this. Now, I am gonna have to take the four screws out to get any further. Crucial memory in here. So the other one was Lexar, which is a popular brand. This is from Crucial. So usually a division of Micron, so very high-end memory in this one. Uh, I see a lot of different uh, power capacitors in here, VRMs, same basic layout but it is gonna have that Oculink interface right over here. It also has a secondary NVMe right there as well. So if you wanna take the two terabytes, add another two terabyte or an eight terabyte or something crazy here, you can do that and add a screw. And that's all you gotta do and you're upgraded in minutes. So I don't know if there's anything else some people wanna look at in here. Pretty basic, it's got a CPU battery. I don't see any other IO that we'd be really concerned about in here. So we're gonna boot this thing up and I'm gonna show you the difference in performance of this mini PC versus the budget one. Same exact AC adapter on both of these, like we said. So we booted right to the desktop. I'm gonna start out and we're gonna do a benchmark here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run Crystal Mark. I don't have anything else running in the background, so it should get the full capabilities here. We got a bunch of cool components in here. This is the 8845HS. This is their high-end mobile CPU. This usually went into their high-end creator laptop line, so definitely tons of performance here. The big problem with those creator laptops, and I had one of them, uh, a Lenovo version, thermal throttling. Like you get this you know, 8945 or this 8845, you put it in one of those tiny laptops and it's thermal throttles and you don't get any of the performance. This one is not gonna thermal throttle on us. It's got the 780M graphics. So that's still an APU, not a, a separate distinct GPU, even though it lists it as one. It's still part of the chip, but it's definitely a lot higher performance. Um, let's take a look at the cores. So tons more little mini graphs here because we have eight actual cores, 16 threads on this one, and it's got a boost clock, I think over five gigahertz when we hit the thing hard. Let's go back to memory. It's not gonna say it, but it is crucial memory and they bump the speed up here. So we're at 5,600 mega transfers. I also love to see that they're shipping it at the highest memory speed. That's not the default memory um, timings for you know, DDR5, 4,800 is. So they're shipping this thing set to the proper speed. The SSD is a Lexar now SSD. So we're getting a name brand storage versus the other one. So we got crucial memory, Lexar storage, nice AMD chip. I can't see anything I don't like about this one yet. We've got that NPU, um, which I am not doing any AI stuff, so I don't know how that's gonna help me. But we go onto the GPU. So this one, you're gonna see their 780, 
allows you to do AV1 encode and decode. So if you're watching a lot of YouTube, YouTube's now broadcasting and encoding in AV1, which is one of the best frame rates for bandwidth. Uh, but this has decode capability built into it. So if you're gonna run OBS or anything like that, very, very cool. So I like that. Oh, the other thing, there's no bloatware on this thing. I had to install all these programs. When I get it, it has nothing which I love, you know, I usually get a lot of computers and other different brands and I get them first because I need to uninstall all the bloatware before these things go into the market or go to a desktop. I don't want somebody playing Candy Crush all day at an office. Um, but you know, I usually take all that stuff off. This thing comes bare, it's ready to go. No junk, nothing you don't need. We're gonna go ahead and start the benchmark. Now I said 3000 was good. Take a look at these numbers. If it performs as good as it did in early benchmarking, you're gonna be amazed. 4,857, almost 5,000 megabytes per second on the read. So that's a PCI Express Gen 4x4 type number that we're seeing out of this already. So these two bottom rows are the ones that we're testing tonight. CPU performance between these two models, if you were trying to compare, the CPU points that, that Passmark assigns them is 21,000 for the, the first machine that we looked at and 30,000, so about a third faster is what you're getting. So for that, the graphics difference is phenomenal. So it's pretty neck and neck. The 3D performance of this new machine that we're looking at, significantly faster. So this almost doubles the 3D performance. So if you are looking for something that's borderline gaming right now, you can definitely do that. Take a look at the difference on the NVMe. So this NVMe getting almost 5,000 megabytes per second versus the other one at 3,500, that gets almost double the points. Now I ran a Cinebench on this before and this thing's coming in at 16,000 Cinebench. Now, if I remember right, my, my 5,800X did like 15,000. Uh, so, you know, compared this to a 5,800X, pretty close. Um, I think that it's either that or 20,000. So it's somewhere within the ballpark, but this is the super big number for workloads that require a single CPU, this thing has single core performance of 1,778. Look at the single core performance of all of the other computers I've tested, including this first one, which is the Ace Magic 11900H. That was the one that had some of the best performance. This thing blows it away. So it has incredible performance numbers and it's nearly 50% faster than an 11900H. That's why they, these chips, this eighth generation mobile is so fast. And then you can see the crystal mark numbers there are just blown away again by these drives. So fantastic numbers here. So, you know, over 4,000, 4,500 in here. I'm gonna run the Heaven benchmark just for a little bit. I definitely could see this running Fortnite, maybe Fortnite performance mode. I can tell you I'm already over 60 FPS. This is looking so much more smoother than the other one that we were running earlier. So I'm loving this already. It is definitely running better. Uh, we're gonna run this benchmark for just a little bit to see if we can get. So overall, I ran this earlier. I believe it got 79 FPS. It's coming in at 78 right now. So it is very, very smooth. This is gonna run your Minecraft, your Roblox, even Facebook, uh, not Facebook. Wow, who plays Facebook these days? Uh, Fortnite performance mode. So this machine, as small of a form factor as it is, will be able to do that. I'm gonna do a couple other tests with it, which I think will be fun. This one, I normally run the full test benchmark. I might just run a couple of the 3D tests because you don't think of a machine like this as having a GPU. The 780M, I believe it's around a 1060 in GPU performance. So let's go ahead and run this and I wanna show you the 3D performance here. So this is 116, 108 FPS and this is your DirectX 9. So this is your very old titles, but look how smooth that looks. It's, a, you know, it's pushing 100 FPS here um, running multiple items, textures, and whatnot out of a mini PC. We're gonna go into the DirectX 10 test now. This is gonna be a lot more complicated here. I'm seeing, you know, somewhere in the 25, 29 FPS. Now, all of my testing slows down when it gets to this one scene, when it, you know, gets close up. But this is a very large world, and we're gonna see the real numbers when we get into the next scene. But you can see it's flinging graphics around pretty impressive now it's gonna slow down right here because they all do I think we're in the 19 FPS there in that one but overall you know decent quality here for DirectX 10 DirectX 11 and 12 are really what most of your games are gonna play now 
So we're gonna go in the DirectX 11 test, and here we go. We're back over 120 FPS here, 125 FPS. If you didn't tell me, I would think that there was a GPU in this machine. If you just said, go look at this thing, what, what kind of performance, is this an APU? I'd be like, no, probably not. You know, if it's running DirectX 11 like this. The next one's gonna be a little bit more challenging when we get in the DirectX 12. It's got a lot going on. Now we're gonna uh, task it a little bit harder, but take a look at this. We're 1080p, DirectX 12. This must have a sweet driver or something in it. It's getting 90 FPS in this open world, you know, space adventure. You're flying around here. They got spaceships, textures. You got draw distances. You got a really good uh, view, view distance in this thing. Uh, you can see everything in there. Now it's going to penalize it and bring it down because this one's meant to run at 4K. And then let's take a look at fractal computes. So you don't think about your GPU of doing cool AI and all these other things that it has to do. But these fractal tests are really cool because it's the computation behind the graphics. So as it's starting to draw polygons, starting to do this, that's what these fractal tests do. I'm not trying to get you guys all dizzy or sick, but I just want to show you particle physics. So these things, what am I getting out of that one right now? 117 FPS and however many thousands of particles it's tracking right now inside this. And this mini PC isn't making a peep. The, the fan, you can feel that it's on, it's blowing some air through. Uh, the Julian Fractal, Julia Fractals, sorry, uh, 400 FPS in rendering these. So again, really cool stuff. And that's just kind of what I wanted to show you that, yes, this little tiny mini PC that I have here that I don't even know what you could compare it size-wise, you know, not a deck of cards. It's a lot bigger than that. But, you know, again, about the size of your old power bricks, maybe two power bricks, and that's your entire computer. This is an SFF mini PC, small form factor, SFF, and this is their mini PC. That is incredibly small. Now, HP also made this one here. This is their ultra small form factor, and this mini PC is smaller and way, way more performance. So this mini PC knocks out these other larger PCs, has more IO, better Bluetooth, better Wi-Fi, all that stuff than these other previous mini PCs that I used to recommend. Uh, overall, very good. I'm gonna run the Superposition benchmark just because I want to, I'm, I'm kind of curious. This will be the last benchmark we run here, but again, Cinebench R23 on this, over 16,000. That's really, really good for a CPU. So, you know, I could run my entire show and my studio off of a mini PC like this. Now we're coming in in the 45 range here already, but this is gonna be DirectX 12. This is gonna have a lot of lighting, a lot of triangles, a lot of polygons. Now there's a little tiny bit of stuttering I'm seeing over here because it's in the 39 FPS range, but still beautiful. You would not expect this out of something without a GPU, and especially out of a laptop chip. <laughs> you know, this is, you can see a lot of mobile gaming laptops with like a 3050 or something. Yeah, you'd expect them to do decent, but something that literally is just an AMD laptop chip that's given enough thermal, um, you know, cooling that it can run. That is super smooth there. I don't know how that looks like on your end. And our overall score on that one was 52.29. Now I don't track these scores, but you can see here, this is the CPU equivalent here. It got an average FPS of 40. So again, medium settings, 1080p, that's better than some low end video cards I've had on the show. And <clears throat> there we go, 32 gigs of RAM, and 780 with three gigs allocated to it. So not bad score overall on the superposition. Again, we're talking about an APU here. So I wanna thank you guys all for tuning in.